People starting to ask where I've been. Well, I ain't been wasting time, that's for sure. Well, as I've spent the last almost two months trying to figure out the difference between these two images, I don't feel like I'm any closer than when I started. They're both just so on point, cold and drippy. I don't know. Hey, that's not even the coolest part though. Check this out. You grab yourself a couple of these little rabbit skins from the leather store, a little handful of uh, safety pins. Then you pin the rabbit skin to the shoulder of the favorite black sleeveless hoodie of your choice. I'm quite partial to this one. Ugh, oh, bro, look, it's buffering right on my sponsorship email where you can send serious inquiries about sponsoring the channel. Oh, that is so annoying, guys. I'm sorry. I wish that didn't happen. Oh well. And then you put the armor on top, and bro, you could be from freaking Skyrim. <laughs> or from Fallout. Why are you running? Why are you running? Yep, I'm telling you guys, you gotta love that Skyrim drip. Nothing beats that good old Nordic protection, which is why today's sponsor is NordVPN. Guys, I won't lie, NordVPN literally keeps the channel running, so hear me out for just a second. I'm gonna tell you a scary story, okay? Imagine this, if you will. It's the end of the world. It's the apocalypse. The, the world is over, okay? The good news, you have everything your family needs to survive. The bad news, your family's 20 miles away, and you have no means of defending yourself. Just imagine that. Imagine how scary that would be, walking slowly through the wasteland. Every dilapidated car you see. Oh my gosh, I hope there's not a murderer behind there every single person you pass on the road oh i hope that's not some radioactive pervert very scary guys Whew, honestly i'm scaring myself right now just talking about it but guys the scary story has a good ending because some way somehow you found yourself a pristine wonderful beautiful well-lit secure secret tunnel that leads directly all the way to your family directly to where you need to go oh man what a relief Whew, thank gosh guys the wasteland is the internet and that tunnel is nordvpn nordvpn VPN encrypts your IP address and acts as a secure tunnel so you can do what you need to do on the internet with the privacy you deserve. Free from the prying eyes of hackers, nefarious government agencies, and radioactive perverts for sure. They got an epic deal going on right now. You can get two years plus one month at a huge discount using my code alpha. That's nordvpn.com forward slash alpha. Thank you NordVPN for keeping the lights on. I have really big lights. See how big that light bulb is? NordVPN keeps this thing running. That's impressive. Thanks for your patience guys. On to the show. Indeed the legends are true. I have in fact procured the original ZNA armor tread plates lost for millennia in that drawer. I put them in that drawer and I forgot where they were. But yeah, basically I had Dan tear apart the original armor because I knew I wanted to upgrade it. It wasn't awful. It just wasn't up to snuff. I, I had big plans for this armor, you see. So he just went ahead and drilled out all the rivets. He separated the plates from the canvas and foam and motorcycle pads. And there they were in all their glory, ready to be lost in a drawer. So first order of business, I had to get rid of the old paint. I tried a few different things. I soaked them in acetone. I tried to just use the wire wheel on the bench grinder. The acetone didn't do anything. Thing. The wire wheel worked a little better, but in the end, as with most problems in life, eh, just kidding, I'm gonna use fire. Just fire, you just gotta burn it with fire. I got all the plates nice and glowing in my forge, and I scrubbed off the weird yellow ashes with a wire brush. It smelled great, probably super good for your lungs. I think they call that uh, hormesis. So then I used the wire wheel that got them looking pretty dang good. The only thing left was a little bit of TLC for the plates. There were some like bends and dents and stuff. Just kind of whack it with a hammer. That's usually my go-to if fire didn't solve my problem. A little bit of smoothing on the belt sander and we're good to go. White spray paint does the body good and once everything is dry and I have sufficiently ogled, very important, I can start laying all the pieces down and lining them up and tracing out the stencil for the leather working. All that really consists of is tracing around the plates and adding, I think about an inch and a quarter all the way around.
All right, you know what it is, boys, and if you don't, you must be new here. Hi, I'm Eli. I like to pop rivets. We're using these quarter inch by quarter inch aluminum pop rivets. I'm gonna go ahead and just go straight down the middle, attach the majority of the plates. But I'm gonna skip these two because I still have to make the strap for the buckle. Uh, this thing with the buckle was just kind of was a total fail. I didn't end up using that or doing that at all. So you're just gonna see a couple of rivets missing there for a minute and then they'll just kind of suddenly be there at a certain point, so. All right, very simple. It's got a little flange on there. Pass it through, put your plate on. That's the good stuff. And here's a little trick too. When you're trying to get the rivet on there, but you're not able to hold it perfectly flat and it's way too far in the middle to just be able to put a clamp on it, put the riveter on there and then hold it down with your hand, press it up against your stomach, your abs, and it, when you have rock solid hard abs, it won't even hurt. Kind of looking like a like a major award. Nine and a half inches of leather by inch and a quarter. I thought that was like very surfacey, kind of superficial, but it's actually sort of deep. I'm gonna reinforce it real quick. Hey, you want to see what I made when you weren't looking? It's one of those uh, roly-poly burnish olies. See that? Ew, yucky, not burnished, ew. Ooh, pretty, is burnished, yeah. Wow, that saved me almost a worthwhile amount of time. Welcome to the Hydraulic Press Channel, I'm Lowry and I'm Anne. That's right guys, finish washers. That's what I did not uh, film myself using with the pop rivets. I only got footage of the fail that was copper rivets. I've done copper rivets a million times. I just kind of find that when it's actually under load, like when you're not just using them for reinforcement in stitching or something, the head will just kind of bend on the shank and then when you straighten it out, then the head is all crooked and it's like poking you. So I cut the copper ones out and instead I just used the pop rivets, but I used the finish washers so that it would actually pop on the outside of the leather and not just, you know, kind of pull through the leather and pop on the steel, crucial. Looks like I'm gonna have to drill these two rivets out. And I should probably do the holes for the little Doritos now. All right. Freestyle a little bit here. This is just for the shape of the leather. So this is the shape of the leather, and this will be the shape of the tread plate. Ugh, I don't have time for this. I'm just gonna use magic. Yes! Oh man, I forget how nice it is to use magic sometimes. Oh, thank you, Building Eli. You are absolutely welcome, Editing Eli. My pleasure. Here's what the leather looks like. Plates go on top, and then underneath there. 
Hmm, this part right here seems a little pokey. I could see that demolishing my forearm. Give me a second. Sure the fit and the flexibility actually checks out before I permanently attach the side plate to the main plate I use nuts and bolts first and in this particular case I'm really glad that I did because it looks great if I were just holding it up there I'd be like oh yeah that's epic I'm gonna attach that but once I actually put it up to my body I noticed this kind of annoying little feature where if you bend the plate out too far it hooks on the outside of the leather and you can't bend it back you have to like jam something in there and pry it out so I'm gonna try to fix that by putting a rivet right here because I think when it bends this part is lifting up off of the leather way too much. I think if it were fixed down, it wouldn't reach up over the leather like that. So let's give that a shot. And I forgot to film the rivet part, but if you could imagine, it was kind of like this. <sighs> Promise. There it is. So this here ended up being just another one of many little fails in this build. Sorry, learning experiences. I thought it would look pretty cool to have the straps coming out from underneath the front plate and you know, it kind of did. But in the end, it just wasn't super conducive to keeping the front and back side plates lined up with each other. It ultimately ended up being a lot more effective just to have the straps attached directly to the side plates. That just ended up working out a whole lot better. Wacky strap situation aside, it's time to add the real protection. You know what it is, boys. <laughs> Alright, time for part two. So clearly, I could not be happier with the front. Uh, the back though, not particularly creative. And especially now that the front looks like this, I cannot disgrace my work with something like that. I burned the paint off, I drilled some holes, and I've decided that I'm ditching that overlapping thing, which actually allows me to only have to use two of the plates. So I'm gonna bolt two halves together. Now I'm good to make these cuts. Uh, you know what this makes me really want to make? You guys remember uh, Lost in Space? Maybe it was 1999. The helmet that Joey has, where he like turns to face the spiders and his helmet goes doo -doo 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 -doo. When I was a kid, we didn't have no Iron Man. We had Joey from Friends with the helmet that goes goo -doo -doo -doo. That thing was so sick. And the layers with this, with the dirty steel color. Bro, we might have a build on our hands. Hmm. All right, anyways, back to Earth. I was gonna do another bend here, kind of hug around the ribs a little bit. I think I'm getting lost in the sauce. This will be good. Okay, so standard procedure, I need to make the slightest little score with the angle grinder, and that'll make the bending really easy. Alrighty, from this point out, it literally is just all the same stuff you do for the front plate, only you're doing it on the back. But there are some things that I added or like changed off camera, just the process of doing it was... If it's boring to me, I feel like it's gonna be boring to you guys, so I don't, I don't like film it. But I guess just to let you guys know, and I bet some of my more eagle eye viewers probably uh, noticed it without me even saying anything. Firstly, I added this extra plate here. When I put the armor on the first time, I realized I was just um, uh, too strong, too strong to fit in the armor. My core just had too much muscle to fit in there. So one extra plate to account for my vast musculature. And I straight up riveted a weightlifting belt into the back plate. Not only does this really pull the look together, but check this out. Hmm, how do I hold this and use my hands? If only my handheld microphone could clip onto me. There we go. <sighs> Being able to just attach the back plate onto yourself without having to mess with these buckles yet really makes putting the armor on a lot easier. So I can just do the buckles on the shoulder without having to worry about the back plate sliding down. And it holds the back side plate in place too. So I can just kind of go by feel. Easy as that. Oh, the freaking. Uh... Yep. 
Houston, we have a drip. Uh, the one other thing you might have noticed. Initially, the side plates were like all the way down here. And that cut... Hey, let me tell you something, okay? When I put this armor on for the first time, I was mad. I, I was angry, not gonna lie. Because after all the work, I put the armor on and it was excruciatingly uncomfortable. My beloved side plates that I put so much work into were digging into my hips so bad on the front and the back. And you can see I kind of like cut a little swoop out of it, which was its own boring, annoying thing. Didn't do a thing, still freaking hurt, man. The armor was like bunching up right here and the back felt like it was getting pulled down. It's like when you accidentally put a shirt on backwards and you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> But I realized all those issues came from one problem. It was my front side plates. The front side plates had this particular issue that the Chinese actually have a phrase for. They would say, your front side plate is way too low. Thousands of years of wisdom in that. Uh, but yeah, I, I had... I had to drill all those rivets out, detach the side plate, raise it up to closer to my armpit, drill all new holes, rivet that on, and then yeah, after that, when I put the armor back on, just felt great. Definitely a pro gamer move. Well, let's hope you liked the video, hope you liked the armor, it's about all I got for today. Thank you all very much for watching, talk to you later, bye.